well patches from 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 weakening over night 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 over nineteen energy 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 sector pro and sir 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 and CEO Van Dam please please good please good please good please good please good to see you here what is 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 driving this. Good morning, Brian. So, I mean, brief, 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 briefly, I would say scabbis, 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 scabbitite in the broader financial markets. Um, oil had been under pressure uh, with regard to the Delta wave and its uh, impact, potential impact on um, oil demand recovery, and especially when it started, uh, the cases started spiking in the US, and then we had the outbreak start uh, in China on the 20th of July, and, you know, various associated um, lockdowns and, and quarantine in, in China. But uh, the real blow uh, last week was uh, signals that the Fed might start tapering towards the end of this year. And I think that was a real double whammy for oil. And, um, you know, not surprisingly, as a result, you know, with all the risk assets uh, starting to catch a bit today, oil is, uh, is, you know, basically going with the same flow. Something caught my attention this morning, Vanda, outside of the price action, Goldman Sachs, they're out uh, reiterating their call for $80 barrel oil. Uh, I would look to be uh, in the medium term. Does that look realistic, given we are seeing weakness in China data and we're also seeing weakness in U.S. data as well? So I think uh, the summer spurt in demand uh, that was widely anticipated and did uh, come through, uh, especially with the full reopening of the U.S. economy uh, through May and June. And we saw quite a bit of uh, travel, mobility, leisure travel, especially, uh, and similarly in, the, in Europe as well. So Western Europe obviously hasn't opened to the same degree as uh, the U.S., but nonetheless, there's been a very strong mobility uh, pickup in uh, Europe as well. And we saw this morning's uh, data, manufacturing activities is quite strong in, in Europe too. But I think the summer uh, boom is over. I think the best of uh, oil demand and oil prices for this year, uh, in my view, are behind us. I wasn't in the $80 camp even before or when the summer spurt was starting, and I certainly don't see it happening this year. Wow. It, this is Julie here, by the way. Thanks for being with us. So. I want to talk a little bit more about China's role in terms of contributing to the oil price and to oil demand, uh, because as you say, we've seen oil prices really follow along with concerns about the Delta variant. That has been part of the story in China. China reportedly has gotten the Delta variant wave under control. Is that part of demand going to come back? Is that part of the reason why we're seeing at least a stabilization in prices this morning? So I would start with the caveat that China overall, Chinese economy has become a bit harder to read. Uh, so mm. there's, of course, the, the Delta outbreaks that began and what, what one would say. And of course, there is the, the, the thing about do you take uh, the official data on COVID cases uh, in China seriously? But even setting that aside, a disproportionate response, as we know, it's one, it's one of the you know, few big economies globally that is actually following a COVID zero policy. So absolutely zero tolerance. And they vowed to crush this outbreaks, and they seem to have managed to do that. So the highest number that we saw, and mind you, we're talking about a country with a population of 1.4 billion, right? The highest number was 143 cases daily. So that's you know hardly anything, but as I mentioned, it was a disproportionate response. On Sunday, so this morning, they have reported zero locally transmitted cases uh, domestically. But the reason I said that it is getting harder to read because, yes, I, I think they will crush this. They have probably crushed it. And I do expect uh, all the curves that were put in place over the past few weeks to be very quickly lifted, I would imagine, as early as uh, in September. But there's a whole lot of other problems that are starting to weigh on, on Chinese econo uh, economy. We have seen that, well, it is growing. It will continue to grow. It was one of the first economies to emerge out of the, the COVID crisis, but it has been decelerating, you know, even before the latest outbreak since pretty much the start of this year. And then we, in, if you look at the oil sector, we also see uh, the government uh, being very uh, concerned over commodity inflation. They have, uh, in the past few weeks, released uh, stockpiles of metals. They also released some crude from, from stockpiles. They've been cracking down on the independent refining sector, you, uh, you know, the, the so-called tea uh, reining in uh, how much uh, crude uh, import quotas they give them. So we generally see 
the teapots have been uh, curbing their uh, their processing rates, and as a re- as a result, Chinese crude appetite has gone down quite a bit as well. First seven months of this year, the country imported nearly six percent less crude than it did in the corresponding. Uh, part of last year. So uh, I think it's um, it's going to take some time for the oil markets to really get its um, wrap its arms around exactly how China is going to proceed. My base case is go- will probably be, you know, one to two percent year on year growth in, uh, in crude imports and, and oil demand. Basically, it's going back to the pre-COVID uh, oil, oil demand and economic uh, growth in China. All right, we'll leave it there. Vanda Insights, founder and CEO of Vandana. Harry, always good to see you. Thanks for staying up. I know it's late over there for uh, where you are. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you.